Hello and welcome to Exchange for Media D2C Revolution. I have with me today Param Bhargava, the founder of TAC, the Ayurveda company. Thank you for joining us today, Param. Thank you for having me. Param, you know, let me start with the encouraging past 10 months that you have had. There's, there has been a massive growth that you've seen. What, how do you think you did, did right in that period? Uh, see, uh, what is like, you know, there are many things. So, we are a fast moving train with a lot of fast moving parts, right? Uh, you know, uh, as a founder, I have a very strong belief, you know, when you are building a startup, uh, and also looking at current difficult market situation, right? So it's a journey like an, a lifelong marathon and a hundred meter sprint for every day. So uh, what we've been doing differently is that, you know, we focus on very, uh, you know, core, you know, sustainable ways of building a business. We are a very fine blend between uh, experience the you know we carry a lot of team experience which comes with you know legacy brands like l'oreal hul coca-cola india pepsi and a lot of new age hustle so we've married the two worlds build a strong team uh, produced and innovated very revolutionary products and then set up the entire distribution which is online and offline blended so that you know we can deliver what we are delivering now and it is turning out to be a you know great story and a great brand in the building indeed a great story uh, you speaking of distribution uh, i i heard uh, or rather i read up about you your expansion plans into tier 2 tier 3 markets uh, what is triggering this what sort of insights are triggering this sort of an expansion and what's basically a localization strategy looking like See, you know, uh, very recently, you know, if you read, if you had read, you know, last night's news, you know, the G20 invite was, uh, you know, welcome from the president of Bharat, you know, uh, what triggering is that the new India, the, the young age, young buyer of the tier two, tier three markets has become very aspirational, right? That, that consumer is looking for uh, a lot of new brands and they're also ready to experiment with new brands for their particular problems. So, you know, tier one, uh, for example, we live in Delhi NCR, you living here, you would have had access to 1500 brands in one category, a skincare brand, you know, online plus offline, limited offline, but a lot, lot of brands online. But when you go to tier 2, tier 3, so they are more, you know, they have less branch and they're very aspirational. They want to look good, they want to feel good, and they're open for new brands to test. And that is where also the income uh, is growing, right? So that's why uh, we are very bullish and focused on this Bharat, you know, the new Bharat in the building where this new age buyer is there. And we want to first build out for them. And then come back in the tier one when we have acquired a larger mass. You know, still, uh, if you look at from a population concentration, 75 80 percent of the population is still tier two, tier three, tier four, tier five, right? So that's that's the pure reason, pure business strategy that why we are headed more in tier two. You know, interesting you mentioned about the consumers being open to trying new brands. Do you think, and you mentioned also, uh, you know, mentioned the income aspect. Do you think the increase in disposable income that's happening, do you think that is playing a role in this sort of a change in consumer behavior? Absolutely. See, one is, uh, you know, India earlier had set target, uh, you know, for $5 trillion. Dollar economy. But the way we have grown post-COVID, and the way we are growing, right, we are actually setting out goals for the entire world. We are not headed towards now a 5 trillion, but by 2030 or 31, we should be an 11 trillion dollar economy. And that growth is also getting triggered because of the consumption being led by tier 2, tier 3, tier 4, and the growth of income in those uh, part of the country. And you know, when development happens, when growth happens, your income increases. When income increases, you start to tend you know, you tend to spend more, uh, right? And because of COVID also, no? 
a lot of focus and push has gone into self care personal care people are more aware and that's why they've started to spend on skin care hair care ayurveda and uh, and we want to be a part of that journey well people are aware of self care but so are the other uh, you know asp- aspir- aspiring uh, brands in the sector there are so many self care brands so many brands that are in the same category that you are how are you differentiating yourself from this clutter see uh, i don't think so you know uh, there is clutter in the category i'll be very honest okay so you know if you want to look at the population of india we are almost at 150 crores how many of them are buying beauty the 6.5 percent do you think there is a clutter there is 93.5 percent of the population that's not buying beauty personal care there is a clutter in term that more and more brands are coming in but when you look at from a consumer standpoint mm. there is massive consumer who has not bought into beauty look at a differentiation between you know a, a, a spend of an indian annualized versus a spend of an american on beauty and personal care you know what's the difference we on an average on an average india spends 11 dollars a us citizen spends 350 dollars oh. on an average Per, per, per person, right? So look at that gap, and the way we are now competing with US and China in terms of growth, right? So if there is such a large gap, there is an opportunity for a lot of brands to come out. We were earlier consuming the Western brands, the global brands coming into India, you know, old portfolio of HUL, portfolio of you know, L'Oreal's, but what has now triggered that Indians are producing great brands. for india and for the world so there is a massive opportunity yes what new age startups have to learn that how do you really encash on this option how do you really set up distribution how do you really set up marketing how do you really create the right funnels which are profitable also and which are scalable also so i feel it's a it's a brilliant time to be in you just have to you know yes there have to be certain unique offers unique products unique solutions that you need to create as a hook and then you know try and scale that to a large business but i notice you mentioned about the global aspect and you also i believe tech is also looking at global expansions a lot of the places can you just give, give let's shed some light on what are your global aspirations so we are uh, we have already started our uh, international business we are again as i mentioned you know we have very traditional business model focus also so we have opened our middle east as the first zone right uh, from middle east we have picked then uh, picked up dubai and abu dhabi as the market to launch uh, we are almost roughly present in 100 plus stores in dubai now and along with uh, being available on amazon uae and noon dot com uh, in next uh, one year or so from now we should be available in 14 plus countries so we are already uh, you know about to launch in canada about to launch in the us then australia and new zealand and the entire other gcc countries kuwait bahrain qatar saudi so there is a large plan to go global uh, there are uh, the trigger factors are that you know we definitely make good margins and you know you look at globally there is no ayurvedic beauty personal care brand which is for you know larger mass population right? because we are a mass premium brand our positioning is very aptly when you look at you know comparing us with a l'oreal at a global scale so there is no ayurvedic beauty brand which is available across channels globally so we are the first ones to enter and take indian ayurveda global so we are extremely bullish in this you know global trade for us So now, what does your media? What will your media mix look like? Considering uh, there's a you know an Indian audience mm. uh, that you have to reach, who whose consumption patterns you would know better, may be very different from what a uh, global uh, you know. Definitely. So what is the what does your media mix look like? How are you reaching different consumers? So uh, we are pure only channel. So uh, in any country where we are opening, we are so we are we are majorly for the middle. Layered population, right? Which is aspirational and we, which wants to become luxury, but it is still hovering in the middle, right? 
for them are because they shop online also they shop offline also because they're habitual of spending offline so our entry you know our market entry strategy is again very you know omni focused that we we are not running our d2c in different countries at the moment but gradually we would but we enter with amazon or any other similar large e-commerce platform and then we also pick and choose the uh, right supermarkets and beauty stores in specific countries so that you know uh, we have that because our category is more from experiential point yeah. you know you need to give a testing you know fragrances people want to you know test out if they want to apply that sunscreen they need to test it out right so we are primarily you know again the way we are operating in india similar strategy there and wherever you can buy l'oreal at a global level tag in tends to sit next to l'oreal across the world wonderful and also you know coming back home to india uh, you have gone big on television based you know marketing you know you have sponsored shows mtv rodies yeah uh, I was I was very curious to know why do you think an MTV Rodi's audience is relevant for tech? So again, you know, our approach has been very unique. Yeah. Generally, if you look at ninety nine point nine percent of the young age brands, they they are limited to spends on either influencer marketing or performance marketing. We also do both of them, right? But what we are testing out is that before going large on ATL, if you understand ATL yeah, is yeah, you know above the line, which is pure TV ads, right? So TV ads are primarily for products. You know, they are not for brands. Right. They are primarily for one product, one solution, and you drive sales for a product. Okay. Properties like you know an MTV Rodies or a Filmfare also we did. They are more for the trust to be built for the brand and to capture a specific audience. So MTV Rodies, for example, has a strong, very very strong niche cohort, which you know that audience always connects with, right? And the way we are positioning Ayurveda, so by tag, you know, our name was the Ayurveda company. We wanted to connect it with the youth. We want to make Ayurveda cool. We want to make Ayurveda sexy, and that's where the young audience is. Anywhere we find an opportunity to. Tell that there is a new age Ayurveda brand, and it connects with the audience. We would go out and partner. So MTV Rodies was one one of those strategies where it's more from a brand spend point that we do more of large brand awareness. You look at you know eighteen nineteen million people watch MTV Rodies, and they're strong followers of MTV Rodies. And it's not only limited to MTV Rodies. We've done all MTV properties actually. Yeah. So Hustle and uh, Special have also be a part of this entire. Uh, you know, plan. But wherever our right audience sits, we would go out and test out different, you know, uh, testing on marketing spends. That can we, you know, look at a delta on awareness? It definitely added a lot of awareness to the brand, and that's why you see the growth that's taking it. You know, that's an interesting take because you know most of the times we hear when a brand wants to reach the young audience. Their go-to is okay. They are on digital. We'll go on digital. So that actually is a very other, you know, very interesting take. So are we expecting to see what 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 are what are the spends looking like? You know, in terms of your digital uh, versus your television, what are your spends? Which ones higher? Where you know? Look, still, you know, our digital spends are higher because the cost of you know running ads on Facebook, you know, that is Meta or yeah. Google, and doing influencer marketing in today's era is significantly high because. You know, television ads make sense when you have larger distribution in place. Uh, in a couple of months later, you know, from November onwards, uh, our TV ads are also going live. We already have ad films that are have either been shot or are in the making. And then once we are set out, because uh, from November we expect our ten thousand plus counters to be live, then we will start doing the larger television media. So as of now, if you see seventy percent spends currently would be digital and thirty uh, percent on TV or traditional media's, but from November onwards, the split would uh, seem to be a little different. Another thing I came across was about uh, Kajal Agarwal's uh, investment in the brand. Uh, why do you think, and what value do you think Kajal Agarwal is going to bring here? So you know, uh, so obviously there are two, three internal marketing things. 
marketing thing as in you know when you want to add a face to the brand it adds a certain level of trust and when you look at ayurveda ayurveda has a very strong following in the south part of the country southern india right where you know a face like kajal because she has been a telugu star a tamilian star uh, she has done a lot of movies down south so she has a very large following there so we wanted to encash that following create a connect for tac and that's already visible in our numbers so typically for beauty brands north is the largest territory in our initial f- phase of our journey south is our largest territory there, right? okay and our cost of overall acquisition has gone down because she has a strong community that follows second you know she's 35 36 year old what we are trying to build is a very new age ayurveda but this new india also looks up to people who are you know mid in, in their 30s or 30 or 20 to 35 who have done really well and still they maintain themselves a lot very social media heavy uh, you know uh, she herself believes in ayurveda she has a young following also yeah. so again she uh, the second point third she wanted to become an investor she is, it's her first investor and so an actual capital it's not you know like typical celebrities and they you know take sweat to the and you know against the money they charge for their endorsements but here she actually had put in capital because she very strongly believes in ayurveda and for ayurveda she found tac as one of those future brands which can really disrupt the entire category so these three were the you know building blocks of our investment journey uh, her investment journey in, uh, in the brand and then eventually you know uh, that that was done when we were when we had signed her for our baby care range no okay during the conversation and sh- uh, shooting of that ad and then our relationship you know grew fostered we have also launched a product in our association which is called kajal by kajal agarwal yeah you know, again a very you know unique way of marketing but it definitely will have a very strong connect correct because we don't need any other marketing to sell it right can you give me a look at uh, like you mentioned about the south consumer southern you know consumers uh, what's the share like are you are seeing on say your marketplaces versus your d2c uh, versus your we are already website? very offline heavy now okay so our 50% plus now is offline heavy okay and balance 50% almost 45 or something comes from our online mm. in online uh, our top 3 4 channels first is amazon mm. second is flipkart third is our own brand website okay then nike and mintra this is how uh, uh, not uh, not nike mintra fourth is now blinkit blinkit is, has really come up actually blinkit yeah. so that's a new entrant because one would not expect a blinkit, blinkit is growing at a fast pace extremely fast so uh, you're getting like a good share out of blinkit as well that's yes. that's actually nice um also you mentioned about uh, november seeing a lot of your campaigns uh, running out are those a part of your festive uh, preparations so festive we have already launched okay. so festive spends festive media buying atl bdl on ground activations have already begun november onwards will be more day to day campaigns going live right because a distribution would be in place to a certain extent so what did your spends look like this festive season did they go up for compared to last year yeah obviously see right now we are in aggressive growth mode right right uh, so we are spending heavily you know overall 35 40% of our total revenue is going on advertising and marketing and okay so that has definitely grown in last two months but we expect that this will yield results on a different level because uh, it's a two year old brand we are upwards of 120 crore on rate now uh by the year end we are targeting you know the closing that is the entry run rate for the next financial year should be somewhere around 250 crores so we intend to be a 20 crore monthly by march okay. so and if the targets are that large so you will have to be very aggressive on marketing front so great and lastly uh, are there any um, thing any updates that you would want to share with us that we should be looking forward to and that we should look out so we have recently opened our first video right okay uh, we opened our first exclusive experiential store and that too again we picked up a tier 2 stuff down okay. we opened in uh, this was indoor indoor phoenix yeah. adult mall it's one of the largest malls in asia right so palatial mall and we are 
on the ground floor in middle of the entire beauty where heels at one side body shop nike for essential everyone and tack has been able to acquire a first store space so we would test out for one or two months look at that ebo strategy of ours whether it works or not or not because our average selling price is low right when you have go in stores your prices have to be you know, slightly premium because otherwise you will not be able to make any other knowledge but this is our you know latest again an experiment and we know that it might not be a very large revenue model but will definitely do add a lot of brand awareness because within indore we have another 70 at least point of sales right. so that will definitely drive more sales for you know other counters so we similarly we would test out pan india that you know we give them an experiential go to market store where people can experience tag the entire portfolio and then uh, it helps us in increasing you know throughput from our other point of sales great great conversation param it was a lovely chat great insights and uh, congratulations on the massive growth that you saw recently thank you thank and you so much for having me thank you for joining us at d2c revolution thank you everyone for watching